from the young poets writing poetry here at the Dune School, we moved down the hill to Coralie Bridge, the birthplace of arguably the island's greatest engineer amongst his many other talents. A plaque on the Coralie Bridge, built in the same year as his birth, 1799, commemorates the birthplace below it of William Kennish, poet, inventor, engineer, explorer. The plaque was placed in Heritage Year, 1986, by the Mackled Heritage Committee. Also in 1986, a film was produced about the life of Kennish by Freddie Cowell and Peter Max, with loan from the Max Heritage Foundation to provide a record of Kennish's achievements. William grew up assisting his father on their Cornet farm, where he recalled riding to the top of a rule on a pony to collect the dried turf. He served his time as a ship's carpenter in Douglas and Ramsey, leaving the island to join the Royal Navy at the age of 22, and rising to become a master carpenter of the Mediterranean fleet. Whilst in the Navy, he invented a method of concentrating the fire of a broadside of a ship of war, for which he received the Isis Gold Medal of the Society of Arts and Commerce. His other inventions and patents included several steam engines, a hydrostatic diving machine, and the pneumatic tube. But he never forgot his home, representing the Manx fishermen in London, presenting their case for better harbours. He used his surveying and navigational skills to discover the first canal route linking the Pacific to the Atlantic, which did not require locks. He died in New York in 1862. On his retirement from the Navy, he returned home to Mona's Isle uh, for a time and published a book of poems, Mona's Isle, in 1844. He was called by W. W. Gill, the Bard of Mackled. His poetry contains many references to Manx and Mackled life in the 19th century, valuable insights into the life, activities, and superstitions of ordinary Manx people. The 1986 film features his haunting Lament for the Mother Tongue of Ellen Vanin and includes scenes from the parish. Mackle's social club planted a tree in his memory in 1995 at the entrance to the Coronary Estate. In 2011, Robert Stimson published the complete works of William Kellish, revealing the versatility and genius of this extraordinary Manxman, a man of Mackle. Now, we hand over to Howard Kane to bring us A Manxman's Farewell by William Kinnish. A man of Dewey from the clan I was trogged, close by the foot of the bridge of Conair, whose keystone was fixed in the air I was drugged, three miles and a half from the town of Rumsey. In this rural spot at the foot of the mountain, I passed the game on of my life's checkered day, alike when December and ice bound each fountain, or flowers sprung forth at the mild breath of May. To me, seemed my cot in the green fields around it, the whole of vast nature's dominion below. The waft the blue ether that arkingly bound it, caused many conjectures its nature to know. In a circle of joy, each moment passed daily, as freely I roved the green meadows of Cairn, and sang in my own native language so gaily the Kirifinyakter or Mullachalain. But ah, cruel fate in her freak had designed me to traverse the regions of old Mother Earth, and leave my dear Manon with sorrow behind me, the home of my fathers, the land of my birth. Full well I remember that day yet with sorrow, when first from my own Manon Vina did stray, and when I beheld the high cliffs on the morrow, fast sinking below the blue waves far away. I thought, of my parents, who fondly caressed me and soothed all my sorrows in childhood's fond years, and love unrequited that pang which distressed me and forced me away from the island in tears. What language can picture my heartfelt emotion as flew the gay bark or the white foaming swell? When I sighed to the breeze in my silent devotion, my madam, 
Maar hij hoort bijna niet. 